Welcome in, guys, to this very interesting Jesse B interior walkthrough video. And I know it has been forever. You guys have been asking me and asking me and asking me some more. Jesse, can you help us with uh, our interiors? Can you help us with some sort of tutorial? And while I am not <laughs> somebody who is a tutorial maker. I am not somebody who is the most comfortable telling you guys what you should and shouldn't do. What I will do, however, is tell you how you can maybe start building a little bit more like me in the aspect of giving you guys the best tips and tricks that I can to get a better understanding of what makes a fairly decent interior. And I say that as somebody who has scoured the interwebs for tips and tricks to make your Minecraft world a little bit better. And from me to you, I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and give this the good old college try. And I thought that a good place to start would be here on Truly Bedrock. As you can see, it's just a basic structure right now. We don't have any fine details, just a little bit of terraforming and a, a little bit of outside work. But if we come in here, you will see that it's bare. <laughs> there, there is nothing in here. And one of the things that I know gets brought up a lot in my streams and in my videos is the fact that I can do a lot with a really little amount of space. And this is kind of the perfect example of that. So obviously what we're going to do is tear up this floor firstly so that we can see exactly how much space we have in this, this nice little area. I really like to, <laughs> to do, um, uneven floors or, or floors that aren't necessarily always patterned. In this space, I think it makes sense to put in some sort of pattern because it's so small. In bigger spaces, it's not really an issue. You can do um, mismatched things and it's not going to detract or be too busy in comparison. So once we do this, let's do that and that. And I'm not a huge fan of leaving the bark. I've seen some people do it. For me, it just is, it's a little bit too busy. And just like that, you have this nice workable space. I tend to start with a feature that I know um, is going to take up the most amount of space. So in this tiny little room, you have to think, I'm going to have a base floor and a top floor. And with there being a top floor, that means there's going to need to be stairs. I could do a ladder because the space is so small. But I, I think in this specific area, a staircase is going to go really well because it creates a little bit of hidden room down here that creates nice shapes. So let's go ahead and start that. Because I've created this little lip here, what I'm going to do is fill these in and start my staircase from there. So going this way, very simple, I know, but I think it's going to create the size that we really want. And then what I'm gonna do is, hello, no, give me that back, please. Is I'm gonna create shapes here. So maybe what we'll do is this. I'm not sure if we want to wrap it around here or not. But we'll do that just in case. I have to play around with it a little bit. So creating some of these is going to give us just about the shape we want, I think. And now, now that I'm looking at it, I think we're going to go straight back. So if I do this and then put it around that way. 
That should be fine. Can I do one more? Nope. Okay. So here we have our very basic, basic shape. And as you can see, there's not a ton of room. When I'm starting in a really little space, the first thing that I like to do is focus on one room at a time, right? So one focal point. And right now I think that just looking inside this little space, the thing that we have to figure out the most is going to be a kitchen area. So all of these little houses that I have in this specific side of the town are all homes. And in doing homes, I want to make sure that they have, you know, some some sort of thing that that creates um a welcoming environment, right? So it's very simple. And I think what we're gonna do is put the kitchen on this side. So let's start by getting some of our, you know, typical, <laughs> our typical pieces. I think we're gonna put the stove there, maybe the sink there, right? And then, Let's do, let's do some shelving, right? And I really like using the, um, the beehive, right? This that's what this is. Yeah. So the beehive I like using is countertops because you see there's like this nice little butcher block feel. So it is by far my favorite thing to use as a counter, as opposed to say, I've seen people use like quartz so that they can use it more like granite. I've seen polished um, diorite. That's a really good one that people use. But honestly, for me, that butcher block feel just kind of really fits into my aesthetic, which is more of the rustic and plain vibes. And here, I think, needs to be a window. And in a lot of my bases, what I typically do is wait to do the windows until I have started the interior because I really like to put windows in a place that makes sense for the interior. Some people think that's backwards, but for me, it really is what works, honestly. Also, I did want to mention these little cabinets over here. I like asymmetrical cabinets when I am doing a build that is a little bit taller. So because of where the window was over here, I decided that the floor and because of this little lip that was here, the floor was going to be a little bit higher up than I maybe normally would do. And in cases like that, I didn't want extra space on top of the cabinets. So doing this little asymmetry thing will bring the focal point over and it won't create so much dead space. And in small spaces like this, I do think that is something very important to remember. And by dead space, I mean big chunks of areas that are the same. So in this instance, the wall that's right in front of us, not having anything there to break up this space just kind of makes the little space that there is even smaller. Since we have this little space here, I actually think what I'm gonna do is move this, maybe put a stair there and maybe more of a cabinet or countertop there because with how little this space is I do think we're gonna end up needing a little bit of bar seating instead of a a full table because this does look like a pretty a pretty small house which would mean maybe a single dwelling instead of multiple people so I don't need a whole lot of seating but if we do something like that, that creates this nice little eatery and it is all very usable space. I do think that what we need over here is some shrubbery, some greenery. If I maybe do this, and I create a little bit of a bush. Again, it, it creates more color that is more of the focal point of the room without taking away from something. So it's not overly busy, but it's also not super plain. And I think speaking in those terms of adding little pops of color, if I do something like this, and add that we have again just you know it looks like maybe cookbooks are up there it could be something very simple it just adds a little bit of definition 
And I can bring that down, speaking of cookbooks, right? Have a little cupboard area. And do I have lights with me? This seems like a really good place for a little bit of a lamp. So creates that color, draws the attention, but also doesn't take away from the size of the build. So it's not overly busy. It's not overly contrived. It's just something simple that will be functional. If I then go over here and say, put up a little curtain, I don't, I'm not mad at it, right? And then what I could do is put a flower pot up there and we'll put a flower in there after. But then we have this empty space over here. So if I switch it up a little bit, right? And I start to do maybe some paintings over here, maybe a little more storage. Storage is always, <laughs> to be fair, right? In these builds, in these really tiny little builds, my go-to is absolutely storage. If I can get as much storage as I can while still being, you know, a little bit functional and not overly busy, I typically am pretty, pretty happy. Now, do we have, say, something like this? Do we do another light source or maybe more? Mm, see, that looks like it's too much, too much color. Because like I was saying, you don't want color to be in too many different directions, right? Like you want it to point to something. And right now when you come through the door, what I want you to be able to see is the bigger picture. So you go in and it's really nice. If I had more color here, my eyes wouldn't know exactly where to go. So I think what we might do is go with a little bit of I think, well, for now, let's see. We could put more lighting, just give this space nice open feeling. And then, speaking of color, if we in turn did something like maybe put you here. You there. Maybe. Something like that, create some space, and then give me some carpets. If I then filled in the rest of this, oh, <laughs> I need more carpet. Okay, do something like that. Again, we have that same thing I was talking about. When you come into a little space, you want it to be full, you don't want it to be empty, but you want your eyes to go to the bigger room, right? So color, color, color. And then all of this is gray. Like all of this is gray. All of this is brown. So it's full. It's detailed, but it's not overwhelming. And I think that's a problem that a lot of people have when they do little spaces. When you're doing a little space, they tend to make it overly either, either overly detailed or not detailed enough and there's just tons of open space because they get so lost in what can't fit there and that's very easy to do if you aren't used to doing little spaces it gets very easy to think oh there's no room for anything then let's see if we're gonna get really detailed right let's put food on the stove and then you can do one of these dealies the only things that are really left in this downstairs space are the details. So if we go ahead and we grab something like this, right? And you just sit there and you go maybe like that. You have little openers, like little cupboard, cupboard doors, like doorknobs. And a really easy one, one that I do all of the time is this. Adding little handrails. 
as you go up the stairs makes such a big difference. It's a little thing, but it adds enough dimension that it it makes it not look so plain or so flat because a lot of things that you'll do in interiors is just adding depth. And I think upstairs we will do a better example of causing or creating depth in a build. I'd say that the bottom area is pretty done as is we have everything all sorted. But when we come upstairs, there's one thing that we have to do right away. And that's make this safe because this, <laughs> this is fun for nobody. And just like we did downstairs, I tend to go with a little bit of this. I, I very much think that the easiest way to do it is by putting trapdoors. And I am a big fan of doing trapdoors over the stairs, right? So you do it this way so that you still have all of this room right here to put things. So if I wanted a carpet or I wanted anything, this is perfectly clear to do so. But what I was talking about when I was talking about depth, right? So this is a very interesting shaped room. We have this little cutout here and I could do something. I could put a bed, you know, any, any of the above. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to fill it and create a little bit of an interest point, right? So this doesn't look good. It's flat. There's, there's a lot wrong with it. And I know you're thinking this is a little space. So why would I block up the little space that I have? And the answer to that is you don't need a lot of space. <laughs> I know that seems counterintuitive, but honestly, you, you don't need as much space as you think you do to fit the things that you need in small builds. I will, I will say that right now, right? In builds where you are living, where you need everything, where you need lots of storage, where you need um, lots of tables, lots of uh, grindstone, stuff like that, it makes sense that you need a lot of room. But this is a tiny little house. And if you were trying to fit all of your stuff in this tiny little house, I think that you you may have to like go to the drawing board, you know, you might, you might have to try again because this is never going to fit everything that you need. It can fit a lot but not, not everything. So if I come over here, right, and I do this, and then I create a little bit of a story here, right? Uh, maybe, maybe we turn these and we make this a little bit of a bookshelf, right? So you can already see that it's creating depth. And like I said, you don't need a ton of walking space here. Do I have, I do, I have a bunch of these. Create that little bit of a shelf, maybe even give ourselves some space here. Maybe something like that, right? And then do we have, we do some flower pots. <laughs> we are we are really invested in flower pots I will say so if we do that it creates a fun little bookshelf but it's getting a little bit dark so I guess what we can move to now is this create a little bit of an area detailed for lighting I think we'll also just put a little bit of a stand there. And I think this is the perfect place for the bed. So if I go here, just whoop, we have our little bed. And then if we give ourselves some interest points, maybe do... So after sleeping, I will say that adding just a little bit of focal points in the pictures really makes a big difference. But I think it's time we move on to the floor. When it comes to the upstairs floor, I really think that just adding a good carpet does wonders. It creates the walking space that you want, but breaks it up so it's not just planks all over the place. Now, what we're going to do is something that I also do 
very, very often, right? Something that I am kind of known for doing in small spaces is I have to give myself a little bit of a desk. So there's that. We'll put a seat there. And now we have this nice little nook. Now all we need is adding in this little bit of a pressure plate creates this like nice little laptop. And I think that it's just a really cute feature. But I just realized something. If we put this here and we do something like this, that's now a little bit more useful. Although I don't, I don't like it taking up that space. So what if we did that instead? Just added a little bit more light and we filled this space pretty well, I would say. Maybe what we do is we add maybe that in there. And that really, really just kind of ties this area together. And I'm fairly happy with it. I just now need to get the flowers for the flower pots. And I think this little house is nice and done. And that didn't take very long. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to show you examples of different size interiors and different options and maybe go through why it is that I make some of the decisions that I do. Heading over into our bigger house at the moment, we will see a better example of the difference between houses, right? So if we come in here, we have the same same type of thing. I really enjoy big open ceilings. I don't like um, enclosing them. And I know that a lot of people do, right? Like a lot of people, they build these big houses and then they put a ceiling on it because they like it to be one size, right? They like it to be even and that's totally okay. But for me, I just definitely prefer having that depth. I like being able to see um, different different heights and different variations. It just makes me happy. But if we come up here, you can see, basically I've just scaled up my decisions from the last house into something more detailed here. So while there is still a single bed, I do have kind of a bed frame. And in that bed frame, I have lights, I have storage. And it's all kind of a nice sitting area. It's detailed. You come through the door. We have storage up here, which fills this wall. So we don't just have a big gray wall. And making things like curio cabinets. Curio cabinets definitely help fill in spaces where not a lot can go on. I could have tried to put like a sofa here, a little seating area, maybe a little table, some option like that. But I really like these little cabinets that we can just put our wardrobe in, something special and out of the way. And you'll notice right here, right? I put the trap doors this way so it looks like the door is open. Again, it just gives me some depth to our build. And coming in here, see here's a bigger example of the kitchen and i really like this because we have now an island so in the last one obviously an island doesn't fit but here it really does and in order to create division in spaces you can do things like add rugs and i know i know i get told all the time my rugs are silly <laughs> because there's like just these like little divots and stuff and it's just a detail that gives again the magic word in these houses in these interiors is depth if i can create depth i'm going to and really it's it's just that simple it's just adding in those fine little tiny details that maybe nobody else will notice but i definitely do <laughs> It is something that I really enjoy in making interiors is filling up the space and giving us some dimension. Now that I've showed you guys a few house ideas for interiors, let's switch it up a little bit and I'm going to show you something more practical. I thought that bringing us all the way back here to season four would be a good way to show you guys the difference in interiors for functional builds, right? Because I can show you all day how to do the interiors for homes, for anything like that. But this is a really good example of how to do 
interiors or one way to do interiors for something that is not just for looks and is completely functional. So here you'll notice that I have the different storage, right? And all of my storage is is not automatic. I've never done automatic. I probably will never do automatic storage. So I really like things to be pretty. I like things to be functional. And in order to do that and still give myself um, a way to create something that, again, is functional, but also aesthetically pleasing, I, I do things like this. I give myself a little bit of space to walk. And in that space, instead of it looking really flat, because there is this big openness, I will do things like mix up the gradients Oops, <laughs> my, my bad. <laughs> I will not break my floor. That is not something I will do. <laughs> I will come over here and I will mix up the blocks. I will create texture that makes the space not look as empty as it could. Over here, I will add little accent blocks. Like up here, we have the copper. That's a really good way to draw the attention to where it needs to go. Okay, this is definitely a storage area, but still make it look uh, dimensional. And like I said, like have that depth. And something that I am really big on is in spaces like this, having multiple layers, right? So I have, just like we had the bookshelves before, I have stripped wood back there with then stairs that rotate so it create different shapes that gives us that dimension and makes it not look so plain and i think in big functional builds like in farms in storage stuff like that it really does help if you play with shapes because there's not a lot that you can do right specifically when it comes to farms where you can't make it super detailed and all of that because you don't want things to be spawnable you don't want um issues to come about so if you do something like this just make it very plain very simple but add that dimension add that texture i find that it helps a lot with making things just look really nice and warm and appealing but unfortunately, I do think that this is the end of this tutorial. Um, I don't can can we call this a tutorial? Is this a tutorial? Is this a walkthrough? I don't know what <laughs> this is. This is the end of it. If you guys would like something more specific, if you would like to see trees, if you would like to see um, a specific type of build, let me know. And I don't have any problem walking you through my point of view or any suggestions that I might have. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.